Hey there, fellow chess students. My name is Anthony Arena. I am a 2000 rated chess expert from Long Island, New York. In today's video, we're going to go over pawn storms. I'm going to show two live examples where we both instigate a pawn storm and defend a pawn storm. I'm super excited to get into this. So let's just get started right away. Well, we'll go d4. No reason not to. It's been treating us well. And we got knight f6. So Trombowski, we're going to try to pressure the knight right away. Not many people know how to play this line. It's definitely a high-level position, the Trombowski. And it's it's very... So you're not going to get a lot of theory. It's it's very much just a very tactical-driven idea. We're going to double up the pawns in the F-file. We're going to put either our queen or bishop on D3. And we're going to launch a kingside attack. That's all there is. Nothing too crazy. So E3, probably the best way to go about this. Bishop D3. And immediately playing h4 we're going to put a lot of pressure on our opponent here uh, when you're playing the trombowski you're not going for draws and you're not going for positional games and that can be kind of confusing because when you play the queen's gambit you are looking for structural positional games in this case we're just looking to rip our opponent in half um and we're doing that with a a beautiful kingside push um we might castle long we might just play king d2 to connect the rooks um there's there's still a lot left open um but let's go ahead and push h5 uh and i'm sure he'll push g5 that's definitely the correct option here if he was to take the pawn back it's immediately losing because a queen takes back on h5 this is also a really bad idea just playing h6 i think the pressure is already getting to our opponent and immediately we do have um h takes g the pawn will take back. The bishop will take the pawn. And we'll have a nice little attack on this rook. Um, and then, of course, we have the open rook on the h-file. Um, our queen can come to h5. It, it's it's a disaster for our opponent. I, I think this is a massive mistake. And hmm, maybe even... Wow, queen, queen h5 here is insane. So... He opts not to take back because of bishop takes g6, attacking the rook. But I think he's made his position a lot worse than it should be. Do we just play queen? Yeah, queen h5. And if pawn takes back, now we go queen g6. And we'll be threatening an h. Yeah, this this h2 check. And we're immediately forcing the king um, towards the center of the board. And I mean, we don't really have great development, but... Also keep in mind that the king can no longer take back. So if we do get g takes f in, which I'm not sure why he'd let us do that, we would simply just win the pawn and we'd fork the king and the rook, um, which in other words, yeah. And also on top of that, he would have to take back the queen. So we'd simplify the game and we just basically win a rook for free. So he has to take back. Now, I, I do question, does it make sense to take back with the bishop? I think it makes more sense to go queen takes g6. Um, just to create that battering ram and yeah let's go takes the queen takes back and then bishop g6 um, we get a skewer tactic here and a really nice skewer tactic um, really the same situation as before um, where he he either loses the queen or he loses the rook but by losing the rook our queen is reinforcing that bishop um, so the queen will either go to f8 e7 maybe even d7 trying to just invade the bishop and just notice that this rook is all by its lonesome and it's double attacked don't get me wrong this is a reinforced bishop it's very dangerous um and here we go bishop takes bishop is going to attack that queen and it's it's hard here Yep, just game over. <laughs> All right, guys, continuing with the speed run. Let's see what we got here. E4, E5, and what's our opponent going to try here? So yeah, knight F3. We're going to go knight F6. And notice how the tension is kind of around this E5 pawn. Uh, bishop is going to be attacking F7. We're going to go ahead and play two knights with knight F6. And we'll see what kind of attack our opponent goes for. It looks like he's going to castle. We'll get our bishop out to F5. And I'd watch out here because he has some Evans Gambit ideas by playing b4. Uh, maybe he'll probably go c3, then b4, and try to trap our bishop. But for now, I'll go ahead and castle. I'm waiting for 
I know it's coming. Um, not yet though. So no problem there. Let's see what he tries to do here. I I I have a feeling C3 is coming any second now. And this is a thematic idea you need to watch out for. It's a pawn storm on the king side that would end up leading us to losing our bishop. Yep. Um, so we're gonna play a6 here. This is the easiest way to avoid those pawn storms. And really what we're looking to do is defend this while keeping our bishop on this important diagonal. Notice now when he pushes even further, our bishop can just go to a7, and there's no pawn storm anymore. There's no threat. So we're okay. And yeah, I do see that he's looking to, to trade off bishops here. So let's just try knight g4, because I would really love to avoid the trade of bishops. Um, it looks like he's able to to stop us from avoiding it, but still knight knight to a7, and we can push b5 and then go ahead and play knight takes b5. Either way, we've successfully refuted the whole pawn push idea. I also like knight to h6 here, believe it or not. Um ju just for the simple reason that I'm gonna scoot my king over to h8 and then I'm gonna play f5. And what we're doing with f5 is yeah, why not? F5, and then pushing to basically open up this rook. If pawn takes, maybe pawn takes back. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I just play B6. Let's just take. Let's just take. Um, and and then push. We'll take and push. Notice that we have three attackers on F5 here. We're going to take back with the knight, and we're going to be in good shape to, to go for some tactics. Um, our knight is trapped here, but if the pawn ever pushes down to b6, we can also just take back with the pawn. So I'm not particularly worried about these threats. Um, let's go, let's go pawn takes. And yeah, I think he messed this up because notice that after the knight takes back, we can just push this pawn here in the center. Um, and we're attacking the bishop and the knight. So right away, we find a tactic. He played a little too aggressive there, just going for that pawn storm. Um, and when we refuted it correctly, it put us in good shape. Though he still has tactics on the board. Um, for example, guys, um, notice that if we ever move this knight, the rook is hanging. So we'll just go ahead and take back right away. Um, we have to be very careful because he's going to put some pressure on this knight. So let's go... Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and take. And... And I'm sure either the knight or the pawn will take. If if the pawn takes, then we just trade queens. I have no problem with that. Um, our bishop will probably go to f5 so that we can connect our rooks and eventually move this knight out of the way. Um, interesting. Let's um, let's go ahead and consider our options here. I want to connect our rooks really bad, like desperately. Um, but if pawn just takes, I don't see the knight as a really threatening position. Yeah, let's just take. I, I don't see what he can do here. I mean, we're pretty much defending. Oh, wow. Okay. So he just goes ahead and takes back. We're going to take and, and let's go, let's go bishop to d7. The idea of having bishop d7 is to connect the rooks, but we're also trying to exert control over e6. Um, and our knight will come to c6 now. From here, we can maybe possibly trade off rooks. It looks like our opponent, he's very aggressive, um, which I, I do respect the aggression, but what do we do here? I could fork the knights, but that doesn't necessarily help the situation. I could play knight f5, but that could fall to some ideas as well. I, I could just play bishop c6. I see bishop c6 as a viable option. Um, the knight is still defending f7, so these ideas aren't that scary. The rook's defending f7 as well. Um, we can still play, okay, we can still play knight b5. And now we're attacking this pawn. And we're also asking, do you want to trade rooks? Because you're already down quite big in this situation. So we're really asking the question, we're posing the question here. Do you want to trade down? Pawn takes, the rook will take back, knight takes. And notice in this situation, we, we're up a knight. We're not up the full piece here, unfortunately. 
Um, not yet, at least. Does knight check make sense? I'm wondering. Maybe knight f5. Tricky, guys. It's, it's really tricky. Um, maybe just knight f5. Maybe knight f5. And then h6. Trying to ward this knight away. Um, I think that can make sense. I don't see how he can really get rid of either of these knights easily. I bet he... Yeah, you see, like, I'm going to go here. I'm going to attack this knight. Um, and I, I just see this as a good opportunity. Yeah, okay. So where does the knight go? Knight goes here, knight goes here, knight goes here, uh, and here. Hmm. So what if rook... Check? What, how can I how can I buck off this square? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um let's go, let's go h6. H6, because it at least blocks off one of the nice escape squares. And it creates an escape square for us on h7. Then let's go, yeah. Let's go rook to a2. And if he does decide to push with g4. I like the idea of maybe knight check and then knight check. Okay, yeah, there we go. So now we just could win this pawn, right? And I don't really see... I don't see the downside to this just yet. Knight h4 is coming, and we're going to look to try to exert pressure on f3 and g2. So I don't see how we can really defend this. Knight, this is pretty much forced here, just go to, going to um, to h7. Um, notice that he covers f7, but we did create an escape square on h6, which immediately pays dividends in the end game. Now we're looking at tactics. And I see a couple of tactics here. If this knight ever moves, yep, here is the winning tactic. This game is actually over already. Let me know in the comment section if you guys can see the mate here. Yeah, so knight is defending g3. And notice this pawn is currently pinned to the king. So first, Knight f3, checking the king. This also blocks off g1, forcing the king to go to h1. Once the king goes to h1, we have rook f1, check and mate. Stay classy, my friends.